Hello and welcome to Showcase, coming to you from TRT World Studios in Istanbul. On today's show, we'll check out the nominees vying for Broadway's biggest prize, the Tony Awards, and let you know why Antonio Banderas is telling fans his swashbuckling action movie star days are over. But first... If we should fail! We fail. All the world's a stage. And whether it's contemporary or classic, we just can't seem to get enough of Shakespearean tragedies. The American artist who creates his unique pieces with the help of robots. Sand dance. We'll visit this school in Senegal whose students are trained by the mother of African dance, Germaine Akoni. Senegalese dancer Germain Akoni believes dance is the most powerful way to express oneself. A choreographer, dancer, and teacher, she's so successful she even has her own signature dance style, the Akoni Technique. But perhaps her greatest achievement is L'Ecole des Sables, or the School in the Sand. Showcases Miranda Addy dropped by the school to see how this next generation is learning what it means to be contemporary African dancers. When I was um, younger, I liked to dance. And sometimes I cut the rules and I said, can we, can we dance like a tree or... Uh, uh, and they said, tree? You, you, you see tree to dance? I said, yes. And they said, they think I am um, crazy. They said in Wolof, Dofby. And, but they like how I, I dance and they come all the time to send me, Dofby, Dofby, come, come to dance with us. Growing up in Senegal, Jemaine Akoni always knew she wanted to dance and teach dance. But in the 1940s and 50s, there were no dance schools in Africa. To see this then was impossible. Uh, my teacher said, you can be a sport teacher. And uh, I go to um, France. I was in a school for sport teacher, but I discovered dance, classic, dance classic, European dance. And uh, I, I was not so good in the, uh, I have, they said the teacher have, I have flat feet and uh, big popo. <laughs> and I said, ah, oh, and I beginning to feel I am different than uh, European. And uh, when, uh, and it was very hard to, to take classic. And, uh, but it was good confrontation between uh, Classic and me. She moved back to Senegal, bringing with her a new understanding of European techniques. Well, Germaine, uh, as you probably know, she's considered as the mother of contemporary African dance. And why? When she started to think about uh, transforming the traditional African dances into something new. It was at the time when nobody else was thinking about it. And this technique helps uh, the, the young African dancers also to, to uh, find their own style, their own way of expressing themselves. In the 1990s, Germaine and Helmut founded L'Ecole de Sable, or the school in the sand. For the next 10 weeks, this group of 24 dancers will eat sleep and breathe dance. They've come from all across Africa to take part in this special training programme with classes every day and on-site accommodation. Really it's a lot of determination, pushing and pushing and sometimes giving up and then back to your head you're like, oh I travelled miles and miles to come here so I need to push. And secondly it's fun because we are different, like we all know different things and sometimes you get to approach someone and like, hey, you know Zumba, let's go and you have fun. So, And the other thing is, it's challenging, really challenging because new teachers, new styles, new life, 
new everything is new new water new food it's fun but it'll be challenging the school's artistic director is Jermaine's son, Patrick. As well as teaching and choreographing, his role is all about educating students on contemporary dance in Africa. Uh, it's one question that my students ask me all the time, you know, what is contemporary African dance? Or what is African contemporary dance? Which is the way I want to use it, African contemporary dance. Well, it's really, um, for me, getting inspiration, experience from Africa. African contemporary dance is about questioning the world, questioning our values, questioning our tradition, and, uh, and have a, a unique perspective. These dancers are only at the start of their journey with the school in the sand. They will return for 10-week training sessions for two more years. They will learn about choreography, interpretation, and improvisation. It's more of uh, uh, doing something, but we, we had to, to, to put that all, to fuse that into our own styles Style that we, we do. So it's more of giving us the opportunity through a technique they've been you know teaching us to use it in our our style and we develop something which is new which i think it's more developmental and good for our dancer the school also offers residency programs and has two dance troops one male and one female and germaine at the age of 74 she's still dancing. She has two solo shows coming up in the UK next week. Jermaine told me her greatest legacy is her two children, who she raised on her own here in Senegal. But she's also the mother of contemporary African dance. So every student who dances here, who learns this technique, is also part of her legacy. Miranda Atti, TRT World, Tubab Diallo, Senegal. Digital technology has made its way into almost all industries, but there are still some fields it hasn't yet taken over, like painting. But now, Barnaby Furnas has become one of the first painters in the world to include robots as part of his creative process. The artist is using them to enhance his works. Let's check them out. Meet Soza, the rover robot helping out American artist Barnaby Furness with his latest painting. It leaves marks on the canvas according to the instructions Furness gives via an optical tracking system attached to this paintbrush-like rod. I'm not interested in these tools to make millions of my paintings. I'm interested in using these tools like, like a saxophonist would use a saxophone, you know, like they all have their idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies. Um, and uh, for me it was just natural to fold it into, into what I normally do. Furness has spent hundreds of hours with Sozo for his latest gallery show. And together they have completed several paintings. The CEO of the technology company that created Sozo is also a painter himself. Every creative industry, every creative domain completely transformed by digital technology over the past 20 years, except for painting. Um, and I felt it increasingly marginalized because of that. So it was a bit of a bugaboo, you know, it was a bee in my bonnet. It was something that just always bothered me and I... Um, um, I sought ways to explore it. Furnace's artworks can fetch anywhere between eighty-five to one hundred thousand dollars. What you're really buying into, and what the curator is looking at, and what the the public should be looking at, is the picture on the wall, and not really thinking about how it got there. But it's not hard to predict that many will still try and take a peek behind the wall.
It doesn't matter how many times they've been adapted or in how many different ways. We're still excited by the prospect of seeing a Shakespeare play. The way he describes emotions and shows how man has the same ambitions and fears no matter which century he belongs to never ceases to amaze us. And the latest to take on his masterwork Macbeth is a familiar face. I have given suck and no. How tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face. It's known as the Scottish play. One of Shakespeare's bloodiest tragedies, Macbeth, is playing at the UK's Royal Shakespeare Theatre in Stratford-upon-Avon, Warwickshire. Former Doctor Who Christopher Eccleston is the power-hungry title character. As tradition has it, each adaptation brings its own approach to the work. And this one focuses on the murderous couple's relationship dynamics in a contemporary setting. It really is the story of a relationship set against the descent into madness of, an in, uh, of two individuals. Um, but it really is about a marriage. And we have a great friend, an actor called Paul Higgins, who said to me, he said, oh, I'll, 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 you know, I love rehearsal because you're finding things out. But our aim, I think, will be to still, still be experimenting on stage. Otherwise, it'll die. And we'll go crazy in Stratford, you know, just doing the same thing, printing it out. Go, we'll go mad. The crew rehearsed in London for eight weeks with director Polly Findlay. They believe it brought different elements to the play that they hadn't noticed before. I really love rehearsal and I particularly love rehearsal with Polly and Chris because they know each other and, and there's a real freedom and a playfulness uh, to the rehearsal. And I remember um, a playwright called Tom Stoppard saying that rehearsal is the wine of life. Mm -hmm. And I think it is the wine of life because you, there's a lot of things that happen in rehearsal. There's the discovery of the play, there's the discovery of the other actors. I, I, I mean, I knew Chris as a friend of a friend, really. So over these past eight weeks, I've got to know Chris, how he works, his imagination. And that's really exciting because actually, the play, you know, this, our little Macbeth, mm -hmm. or our big Macbeth, is to do with everybody who's been involved in it. And they're each imagination that has contributed mm -hmm. to what we eventually present on the stage. And it's so surprising what you think you know, or what you think you don't know, and suddenly you discover because of the other person. The story of Macbeth has been captivating people for centuries. And Eccleston's role is no exception. We should fail! The two-time BAFTA nominee says, underneath all the bloodshed and sinister witchcraft, he's able to connect with the tragic hero. Everybody I've ever met, certainly from the male species, are deeply flawed. Um, so I think even at 17, I thought that's me. Which is obviously not to say that I'm going to kill anybody, but certainly the capacity in... I, I, I just, I don't know, there was a violence to him, a darkness to him, a regret. Um, it's very emotional. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Uh, things stuck like time and the hour run through the roughest day stuck. And the moment where he says, I'm so far in blood that should I return, should I wade no more return. Extraordinary oh, things. Yeah, which, I don't know, just captured my imagination like no other character, no other play has since or before. For thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Macbeth runs until mid-September in the UK. And it will also visit Australian and US cinemas through live screenings between May and July. When we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chain. Still ahead on Showcase, honouring Broadway's best. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2018 Tony Award nominations. That's my point. The countdown begins until the June 10th awards show held at New York's iconic Radio City Music Hall. Al Qaeda is alive and well here in America. Be vigilant. Okay. I don't know Blinded the by the light, actor Jennifer Morrison makes her They're directorial debut They're with Sundogs. Let's come and visit me sometime. 
pretending to show interest in this girl's art because the bloom is off one muse and you have decided to pluck another? Picasso unmasked. In this latest role, actor Antonio Banderas brings back to life the pioneer of Cubism. Since its very first award night back in 1947, the Tony Awards have been the benchmark when it comes to honoring Broadway's best. Long considered to be the Academy Awards of live theater, they may not attract as much attention from the general public as the Oscars. But for theater fans, they're just as buzzworthy. Here's our look at some of the productions in the running. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2018 Tony Award nominations. Organizers of America's most prestigious theater prize, the Tony Awards, have announced this year's nominees. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Harry Potter's Cursed Child has won 10 nominations, including Best Play and Best Actor for Jamie Parker, who plays a grown-up Harry. AIDS drama Angels in America has swept 11 nominations, including Best Play Revival and Best Actor for Andrew Garfield. There's really nothing to worry about. I think that Shochen Bamromim, Hamste Manucho no Hono Al Comfe has Krino. What? The Broadway play examines homosexuality in America in the 80s. It already won a Pulitzer Prize for drama in 1993. AIDS. Your problem, Henry, is that you are hung up on words, on labels, that you believe they mean what they seem to mean. Another revival to receive a nod with eight nominations is The Iceman Cometh. Actor Denzel Washington was nominated Best Leading Actor for his performance in the drama. Tina Fey's pop culture hit Mean Girls and SpongeBob SquarePants lead the musical categories. Each has received 12 nominations, including Best Musical Award. The Band's Visit, a musical about a group of Egyptian musicians stranded in an Israeli town, isn't far behind. It's won 11 nominations, including Best Musical. Other outstanding nominations are shows such as Frozen, Farinelli and the King, and the interpretation of George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion as My Fair Lady. The stages of Broadway will be honored with Tonys for 2018 on the 10th of June at New York's Radio City Music Hall. There was nothing wrong with Lenin except his politics. More and more directors are aiming their new productions at Netflix mainly because the streaming services giant Reach appeals to younger audiences. One of its latest movie releases is Sundogs, a film which tells the story of a man who tries to become a national hero, but ends up caught in the middle of an unexpected adventure. The latest video of Osama bin Laden surfaced today. With the Al-Qaeda leader claiming his organization is alive and well, and will continue to target Americans both abroad and on their own soil. Quote, we must eliminate the cross. Ned wants to serve his country. After 9-11, he becomes obsessed with the idea of becoming a hero and saving lives. Ned Chipley, reporting for duty, sir. I put on 15 pounds of muscle mass. I can do 60 push-ups without stopping in 100 if you give me a 30-second break. I can run six miles in 42 minutes. And I want to save lives. Though there's one tiny problem. He is mentally unstable. Part of me wants to know what's going on. 
Sun Dogs is a drama comedy by actor turned director Jennifer Morrison. I think it's sweet. The simplest version of the explanation is that it's a young man who's determined to be a hero, and he goes on a misguided adventure that, that ultimately does take him to a path to find his purpose in life, but takes him down sort of a misguided path on the way there. Look good? Looks good. The film has already won a number of awards and received positive reviews for its focus on relationships and compassion. For this office, the real heroes are the ones looking after their fellow citizens here on the home front. Morrison, who made her directorial debut with the film, stresses the importance of movements like Time's Up. Be vigilant. People's minds are being opened to certain things, you know. I. Um, I'm developing a project with Sony right now that would be a huge movie, and oftentimes in the past, that's not a leap people would take. They wouldn't give uh, a, a female filmmaker who'd made an independent film even a shot at doing a, a huge budget film for a big studio, uh, you know, five, ten years ago, because it wouldn't be something that resonated in their minds. They would do that for male filmmakers all the time. It happened a lot for them. Um, but because of this conversation and because people are really aware of it, they're going, oh wait, why would we ever hold someone back just because of their gender? So that awareness, I think, is definitely helping open doors for me and I, I hope is opening doors for other female filmmakers. Al-Qaeda is alive and well here in America. Be vigilant. Okay. Sun Dogs has already premiered at the LA Film Festival in June 2017 ahead of its Netflix release in early April 2018. Turning now from the theater stage to the silver screen, and the one thing almost every actor fears being typecast. The roles that can catapult a performer into superstardom can also be their downfall. For his latest production, Actor Antonio Banderas is going against his own grain, boldly putting down his guns and picking up paintbrushes to play one of the most famous artists the world has ever known. They call him a loner. I know who you are. Really? You kill drug dealers. Antonio Banderas first sprang to public attention in low-budget action movies. His unique acting style and screen presence allowed the Malaga native to move on to even bigger budget adventure fare. For one final... And it was these roles that brought the awards and a loyal global fan base. Still, find the ugliness beneath the beauty. For his latest outing, the veteran entertainer has surprised critics by assuming the identity of painter Pablo Picasso at a time when he was struggling with being an art world celebrity. Banderas has no regrets about putting away his guns for the new project. Even if I made the perfect painting. You don't think I'm almost right, do you? It definitely gave me the opportunity to kill that other Antonio Banderas, which I was tired of him. <laughs> the, you know, action hero and, uh, you know, all those characters that I basically that I played in America because I'm very proud. I'm very proud of some of them, but I'm very proud also of the work that I have done with Pedro Almodovar in, in Spain and all that stuff. But uh, it gave me this opportunity to just get rid of that image and, um, and get into uh, a character that allowed me to be more introspective, to more reflective, um, more serious in a way, um, creating, um, you know, um, the life of, uh, of Picasso. No? And um, probably that is gonna, it's gonna give me, if it's successful, and it, it, the people you know, understand that in the same way I do now, um, it's the opportunity to just travel to another place, another space in my career that I have been just longing for. No one will know my name. The Latino star confides that the role of the visionary Spaniard felt natural to him. Everyone wants something from the great because We were born in the same place and uh, we were born under the same light, the same shapes, the same smells. Um, the fact that he left uh, his hometown to the world and I did the same. There was certain parallel lines, you know, he's known all around the world and I am too. So I don't know, but yeah, there is a deeper connection that I don't know exactly what it is. Probably. Uh, at least, uh, you know, a uh, decision to break certain rules and to leave a landmark 
in your lifetime. I know that he, you know, uh, got that objective. I don't know if I did yet. One of us is leaving, Pablo. You fight it out. Despite his desire to continue on his arthouse career path, the Hollywood actor is still contracted to appear next year in the action-packed Marvel Comics adaptation, New Mutants. You have children, women you love. Some things are more important than art. No, not to me. And that's all for this edition of Showcase. Head over to our YouTube channel for more of our coverage of the global art scene. I'm Efnan Han. Bye for now.